Well, again, I'd like to thank everybody for joining us here, and I'd like to give a, a brief uh, introduction to John Hewlett, who um, is going to be our presenter today, and give a, a quick introduction and biography for John. So John Hewlett, as I mentioned, is the Farm Ranch Management Specialist at the University of Wyoming, and is also a member of the Regional Right Risk and Right Navigator team. He also coordinated past efforts of the regional wire program. He grew up in Washington State where he worked for eight years or as a foreman on a large stalker cattle crop operation. John holds a currently a BS degree in agricultural business from Montana State University and an MS degree in agricultural economics from Oregon State University. He came to the University of Wyoming Department of Ag and applied economics in 1987. Since then he's been involved in a number of state and regional extension programs, receiving two Agricultural and Applied Economics Association awards for professional achievement, five Western Agricultural Economics Association awards for outstanding extension programs, three Western Extension Directors Awards of Excellence, two UW Cooperative Extension Awards for Creative Excellence, the Jim Debris Excellence in Cooperative Extension Award, the National Association of County Agricultural Agents Distinguished Service Award, and nine other regional or national awards. Over his career, John has been involved in over 100 grant-funded projects totaling over $8.6 million, contributed to 20 books or book chapters, 13 journal articles, 30 abstracts, 86 extension bulletins, 32 fact sheets, over 300 popular press articles, 47 websites, 37 web courses or online tools, presented over 100 professional presentations, webinars, and over 550 extension programs. In addition, he has had the privilege of traveling and making presentations to agricultural operations in Australia, Canada, Ireland, and New Zealand. John's current extension interests include risk management, integrated management, enterprise assessment, financial analysis, record keeping, and applications of technology and agriculture. So again, we'd like to thank John for joining us today, and and, and I, uh, with that, I will turn the time over to John to begin our presentation. Well, thank you, Caleb, uh, very much, and thank you, everyone, for joining us today. I'm not sure that even half of that stuff could possibly be true of anyone, Caleb. I don't know if you needed to go through all of that, but uh, thank you for that very uh, thorough introduction. Um, we have a fairly short time frame today, so it's probably obvious to all of you joining us that we won't be able to cover every single aspect of legacy planning. But what we hope to do is to touch on just a few of the resources that are available uh, to help farm and ranch families uh, get started documenting their own legacy. And in historical terms, a legacy is something that is handed down from one generation to another. An individual's legacy is a summation of a lifetime of achievement and the context in which that lifetime will be remembered. A legacy is not just money, but reputation, accomplishments, and impacts made on the world. Now, the Allianz Life Insurance Company conducted a study of several years back on people's beliefs and attitudes about legacy. There are significant gaps in what baby boomers and their parents expect from and define as inheritance. Non-financial items, it turns out, that parents leave behind, like ethics, morals, faith, and religious beliefs, are about 10 times more important to both boomers and their parents than the financial aspects of inheritance. Legacy gaps exist because boomers and their parents are not having the in-depth conversations about legacy and inheritance in productive and meaningful ways, even though they say they are having such conversations. Now, the survey found that both parents and adult children were uncomfortable discussing the topic of leaving an inheritance, but both enthusiastically embraced the idea of leaving a legacy because it captures all the facets of an individual's life. For most people in the study, inheritance and estate planning were scary and dry terms. For this reason, a complete legacy might be defined as values and life lessons, personal possessions of emotional value, instructions and wishes to be fulfilled, financial assets and real estate, 
and management succession. And we're going to touch on just uh, each one of those as we go through this morning. So in the survey, both generations uniformly agreed that the most important element of the legacy is values and life lessons. Sharing your values and life lessons includes such things as personal and family traditions, a sense of ethics and morality, faith and religious beliefs, hopes and blessings for future generations, and life experiences. The three main components of values and life lessons are family traditions, family history, and belief systems. And more than just routines, family traditions are practices and beliefs that create positive feelings and are repeated at regular intervals. Often, these traditions are handed down from one generation to generation. So some could be based on religious beliefs, while others might be based on culture or other factors. Family history offers a great value to its members with wonderful stories of the families and in the past. It is important to get your plan in order for what you want to include to create a family history project, if that's to be part of your legacy. Your belief system is a very important as it defines the limits of your experience and the set of precepts by which you live. Beliefs often influence your thoughts, words, and actions. Now, all of these may be important for some individuals to share as, again, part of the legacy you want to leave behind. Now, a second pillar of a legacy is personal possessions of emotional value. This section addresses the process of passing on personal possessions to younger generations. While most people are aware of the importance of planning for the transfer of titled property, most families do not plan for the transfer of non-titled property. And this can often create conflict among family members. These items may have great sentimental value based on the memories and feelings that they evoke. Now, many of the same tools that can be used to distribute uh, titled property can also be used with non-titled property. Transferring the ownership of non-titled property can pose more challenges than titled property, uh, given the emotion and memories that may be attached to them. Now, under final instructions and wishes to be fulfilled, the first step is to decide what constitutes a good death. And this varies, obviously, from one person to another. The second step is to identify and document what your wishes are for the end of your life. Where do you want to live? Where do you want to die? What sort of medical care is it that you would like to receive? And who should care for your dependents? The third step is to think about and document your final wishes those things that pertain to your burial and memorial. And in today's world, step number four, which is to provide a list of secured places and passwords, is also extremely important. Now keep in mind there are no right or wrong answers here. It depends on how you see it. Death is certainly a natural part of our life, but for most of us, talking about it isn't. Most people are uncomfortable talking or even thinking about what will happen when they or a loved one dies. If we consider the end of life, several points are very important to think about, and that would include uh, spiritual rituals, hospice, hospitals, and maybe even riding off into the sunset. How much care, the type of care, where it will be received, our choices that we have in today's world, but we must make those preferences known to those around us who will have charge of us as we reach the end of our life. And there are certainly people who can help. Many people avoid talking about end of life because of their fears about suffering or pain, the separation from loved ones, and let's face it, the unknown. These fears keep them from dealing with life's final lesson and make it harder to plan their lives as they wish. Others who have been through this with loved ones or friends often have great advice and insights, but we must engage with those others around us to learn from them. And remember, we don't need to go it alone. So the question might be asked, are you ready? Have you thought about your own personal readiness? Uh, 
And some things to consider there. Do you have fears about dying? Have you achieved your lifetime goals? Are you at peace with yourself? Or are you, are you at peace with others? Uh, have you received counsel from a spiritual advisor? All of those things fit under the personal readiness category. Under personal legal readiness, we might consider, are your legal documents in order? Have your funeral or memorial service arrangements been finalized? Have you completed the necessary documentation for, say, donation of organs or other donations that you might be interested in making? Uh, so those are some things to consider there. Under funeral or memorial service arrangements, have you thought about what kind of service you would like to have? Or have you made arrangements for interment or, or a scattering of ashes or those sorts of things? Have you created a list of instructions for loved ones to carry out after your death? If you have a business, uh, business arrangement things to consider are quite lengthy, but certainly you may want to think about arrangements for the care of any animals if you have an agricultural operation. Have you completed documents to identify your financial assets and liabilities? Have you made arrangements for your business to continue or to be sold following your death? Have you addressed these many questions in, under each of these different areas? Do you have your approach documented? And perhaps most importantly, have you shared that with others? The fourth component of a legacy is financial assets in real estate. It covers topics of estate planning, financial planning, and titled property transfer. Now, probably the most familiar to folks who are thinking about uh, a legacy at all is the estate planning process, which is a plan for the disposition of your property upon your death. Your estate plan can help you enjoy financial security during retirement and provide for your heirs. If you have a business, your estate plan should include provisions for the continuation or systematic sale of the business. Estate plans impact personal finances and they have legal and tax ramifications. It is important to seek appropriate counsel from your attorney, from a tax preparer, and from other professionals that are knowledgeable about estate planning. A well-thought-out estate plan can provide fair consideration of your heirs. Under financial accounts, you'll want to designate someone to handle your financial affairs, including paying your monthly bills when you're unable to do so. You will need to allow that person access to your bank and other financial accounts. This is commonly accomplished via powers of attorney and ownership of joint accounts. Real property includes such things as assets in, uh, like land, buildings, and other permanent improvements which are fixed to the land. Uh, certainly personal assets can be defined as either titled property or non-titled property. Most people have plans and are familiar with the legal tools for distributing titled property when the owner dies. In many cases, however, individuals fail to plan ahead to include non-titled property as part of that decision-making process. Titled property, however, presents a number of unique issues. Any plan for transfer or of ownership of those titled property items should consider the ultimate goals that you might have for the property itself. You also need to consider the issues of fair versus equal and how that will be addressed within your plan for transfer. And the final component of uh, lasting legacy is management succession. This segment covers the background of the succession of management responsibilities and issues involved, uh, suggested process for planning succession, and an outline for developing a written plan. Now here we're, there are two distinct transfers to consider when you're thinking about succession and uh, leaving a legacy. One is ownership of the business and or personal property, and the other is the management of the business. So how you need to ask, will the decisions be made? Uh, who will be making them after you're gone? And will the opinions of any others be considered, whether it be family members or outside uh, persons that may be in an advisory role? How will those things be considered and how will they be handled following a death? Now, management succession planning is the first stage of an efficient transfer of ownership, leadership, and management of a business to the next generation. 
Almost all business owners want their business to transfer to the next generation. Unfortunately, only about a third of all family businesses successfully make that transfer to the next generation. 70% uh, do not survive to the second generation, and as much as 90% do not survive into the third generation. And the reasons for this are certainly many. Uh, logic would suggest that developing a succession plan would be an obvious requirement of management and business ownership. However, complex forces are at work despite recognizing the importance of a plan, and most farm owners and managers decide to do nothing about succession. There are a number of reasons for this, but to name just a few, uh, control may be the central issue for some people where business owners do not find it easy to come to terms with the idea that the business could operate, let alone survive without them, they find that very difficult to accept. And so for this reason, they're reluctant to give up control. Facing the reality that others may be able to run their business as well or perhaps even better than they could is painful and threatening. The business defines them and surrendering power can be a huge sacrifice for such individuals. Fear is often another uh, point of contention where fear of retirement can be of powerful force in making these sorts of decisions. The thought of leaving a day-to-day -day involvement in the business and adapting to a whole new lifestyle can be very scary. Succession planning forces business owners to think about the end of their lives and come to terms with their own mortality. Uh, these thoughts can evoke feelings of fear and regret all over again. An inability to choose among children often discourages succession planning. The dilemma between business values and family values comes up. Should the selection be based on business competence, or should it be based on the family values of loving and treating all family members equally? Obviously, a number of complex issues involved there. Now, owning and operating a farm has some unique differences when we compare it with other types of occupation. Uh, the primary differences that most hinder succession planning in agricultural businesses include uh, these listed on the screen, which include emotional attachment to the land, where most farmers are emotionally attached to the land uh, that they've either grown up with or inherited and that they've owned and managed perhaps all their lives. Uh, oftentimes, farmers have no plans to retire. Many full-time operators have a very difficult time hanging up their hats, so to speak, when it comes time to retire. They often never expect to fully retire and be separated from the business and its activities. Farming is a lifestyle and is certainly in most people in agricultural fields that offer something non-farm life can't match. So they have never thought about living off the farm or don't really feel comfortable uh, considering what those options might be where they're not living on the farm. Finally, no retirement income. A lot of operators have no other source of retirement income once they're retired from farming. So that issue alone uh, often prevents them from fully retiring. And in many cases, farmers have invested uh, in agricultural assets, including land, machinery, livestock, etc., throughout their careers and had a few resources uh, left to invest in any kind of retirement plans requiring the sale of those assets to provide for their retirement. So again, obviously the issues here are very complex. And it's made further complicated by uh, these issues that come up when we start thinking about transferring management responsibilities to the next generation. And we've categorized those issues in three different main categories, managing the interpersonal issues is a critical aspect of succession planning for family business. The good and not so good aspects of relationships within the family spill over into the business decisions that have to be made. Um, and those can vary by perspective, uh, their styles of communication, and whether or not we have uh, mechanisms in place for managing conflict. Uh, formalized management incorporates the planning of, uh, from the business world into the agricultural uh, family business and uses goals and financial analysis and other strategic management tools to better communicate what's going on in the business. Uh, in this way, it allows a family to understand what's going on with existing operations and to evaluate alternative uh, choices that are presented to management. And so 
using those formalized business management practices and formal business communication modes uh, can certainly lead to a better situation in terms of transferring uh, management responsibilities. And finally, production management issues cover a host of areas where differences certainly can come up. Whether it's management responsibilities uh, have or have not been delegated to particular individuals for crop or livestock enterprises, whether the person with the responsibility feeds correctly the, the livestock, uh, whether they can plow a straight furrow, or whether they're too easy on the hired hands, or perhaps most importantly, if those individuals that are being mentored into management have the option to actually fail and learn from their own mistakes, can all make a difference between the ultimate success or failure of the operation. A big challenge in succession planning is knowing even where to start. Now, the seven-step process on the screen defines not only how to begin, but also important actions to take through the entire transition. The details, along with the worksheets, electronic tools, and other resources, uh, will be discussed in more detail in our online module that follows this webinar. All of those materials, however, are available on our website. Now, following the stages of this, a management succession journey can help to assemble a written plan. The process of outlining each stage challenges the individuals involved to cover the alternatives available, and it can help serve as the impetus for discussion with others and help to clarify what to expect as we move forward. It is also critically important to keep in mind that management succession is a journey and not a destination. Even with a perfect plan in place, adjustments will certainly be needed as the individual's lives who are involved unfold with all of the changes that those may imply as we move forward from today. For this reason, the plan must also be revisited periodically to ensure that the roadmap is still accurate and relevant for everyone that is involved. Now, leaving a legacy that everyone can buy into depends on elders and adult children being able to bridge the communication gap. Certainly, communication between generations is vital to ensure that the needs of the elders and heirs are aligned. Talking about a legacy can be an emotionally satisfying experience for both parents and children. It gives the elders and their heirs an important opportunity to share their most important dimensions of a lifetime. While mentoring the next generation into ownership and proper management of the farm or ranch is a lifetime goal, certainly for many involved in agriculture. Now, many of us have all heard different difficult uh, stories where loved ones in positions of critical importance to the future of the farm or ranch have been lost. How can we best prepare the family for this? What are the best practices for planning a legacy? Is there a better way than just waiting for the end to come in order to deal with it? And we would respond with, yes, there is. Uh, creating an ag legacy is an important, if not critical, chapter for success in most farm and ranch families, perhaps even the reason that they're involved in agriculture at all. Yet many, if not most, feel powerless to create the legacy they so desperately want to leave behind there are resources available to help. Now, aglegacy.org has been designed to assist individuals and families begin that journey to creating a legacy in agriculture. It offers numerous resources to help you get started with that, all the way ranging from online electronic courses uh, to resource materials that include uh, workbooks, bulletins, and various tools, uh, learning modules, um, and links to outside uh, resources that are available around the country. Certainly, a legacy is something that is handed down from one generation to another. An individual's legacy is a summation of a lifetime of achievement and the context in which that lifetime will be remembered. Each of us will leave behind a legacy, whether we want to or not. The question is, is yours ready? And with that, Caleb, I'll stop and be happy to take any questions that uh, may have come in from our audience. All right. Well, thank you very much, John. 